Hi people. Here's a quick tutorial on how I went about modelling the new Tottenham Hotspur football stadium. This stadium um, was complete in the early parts of 2019 and it was under construction for a number of years. Anyway, I managed to get hold of the blueprints online, architectural blueprints online, which could be found um, um, doing a quick search. The blueprints of um, medium quality, and I was able to set the blueprints up onto planes in uh, Cinema 4D by making images, um, JPEG images of, of the blueprints and importing them into materials, then placing the materials onto planes. So this is how the blueprints were set up. So we have the plan blueprint here, where um, you can everything is done in plan view. So let me just hide them in, in sequence. So we start off with the plan view. And if we go into the cameras and look at the top view, we can see that we have it perfectly aligned in, in plan view. And if we go into the front view, that's nothing showing yet, but if we just hide that spline quickly, turn my splines off. Anyway, okay. We go into the side view. What's this showing here? Don't need that display showing. We go to the side view, and you can see we have the side view. And if we go into perspective view, I will highlight the other side views other elevations, so that's half the elevation here. Please note how I position the, the blueprints so they line up with the um, bottom of the plan view. Anyway, this is just quickly just showing you how, how I, I set, up, set the plans up. And this is the other side of it. So you just quickly see it. That's the architect populace. And you can see that we have that all set. Now what I'm going to do, I've already drawn some of these um, stadium bits, so I'm just going to show them in sequence. So I'll quickly show you how these things look just by revealing them. So these were done by just extruding along the side. So that you have the stadium, you draw one panel, then you extrude along the side. So let me just show, take away the, the blueprints so you can just see that how the stadium bell was constructed. So that was extruded along the side to form part of the stadium, well, so this is the very beginning parts of the stadium. Now if I close this down, not, so no changes, and I'm going to the next stage I went on to, which was let me see in my, in my sequence, Stadium, um, Spurs Stadium 1, cinema. let's go into that. And it shows you the, the Stadium Bowl at a more advanced stage. So it's able to extrude all the bits. So if we hit Quick Render, you can see all the bits were, were drawn in.
and I started to drawing like the steps and then and then, and the um, entrances and exits. So if we take, for instance, the plan view. Hello? 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 Jean? Hello? Hello? Hi. Uh, what's up? Did you call me? No. Oh. That's really weird. Your number's disappeared. I was just leaving a message for a member of staff who called me on my mobile. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was I was recording something on the All right, so you didn't call me. No. Well, I haven't called you. That's really odd. Okay. Yeah. All right, you at home? Yeah, I'm at home, yeah. I'm on my tea break, so. I enjoy your tea break. <laughs> Nothing to enjoy. You can't even go out and stand by the river or something, you know, like Canary Wharf or I know, but it's not it's not that now at the moment. I was on recording. Yeah, I'm recording something on the on the, on the, on the, on, the, on the, uh, how to do something on the, on on the computer. No like what? How to do what? How to model? I'm doing things things on modeling and how to model something. So you've interrupted. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, all right. See you later. I'll see you later. All right. Speak to you later. Good idea. Okay. See you later. All right. See you. Bye bye. 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 That was my wife Jean calling me, disturbing me while I'm doing this channel or this recording I should say on how to model a stadium so again you go to the top view and you can see I've managed to locate all the stadium um, openings in the top view that's the one I'm looking for that plane, uh, plane, plane four, because that shows you um, where all the, the entrances and exits are, and I'm um, showing you how um, the stadium bow. How I've tried to model exactly where where every single exit and um, entrance is on the plan view. So the aim is for accuracy. So you're getting all your cuts there. Again, this is just very quickly and briefly showing you how I would do this, the process I'll do this. The actual doing of it is a lot more involved, but that is saved for a later date. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into perspective view. And that shows you the stadium ball at this stage. So that's the south stand. Okay. That was as far as I got with that point now. So I went on to the next bit. Now I'm going to go on to the next bit now, which is close that. Don't save that. Number two, stadium, newspaper stadium number two. Now I've got gone to the point where I've got the stadium bow in and I'm starting to get like other structures in there. For instance, I've started to show how seats would be placed in there. So you could start seeing the layout of seats. So this is seat structure using the cloner tool. There's a quick render. This is very rough, uh, very roughly placed in these seats. See if they're working correctly. And I just started to draw in the outer rim sections. Put in a basic pitch just to give it a bit of a um, idea that it's a football pitch or a football stadium. Uh, again, adding adding more detail. 
start starting to adding things like um, the, the, the individual steps as they um, these are the steps um, supporters would use to access the, the stadium bowl and how they get their seats get to their seats again this is again very roughly laid out started to draw in the stadium rim and the very origin and the stadium tree support tree at the back so again it's just shiny this is how far reached on the second bit of it so it was when I saved it at um, stadium number two and so this is shiny let me show you it's in uh, full screen mode so you're starting seeing it start to look like uh, the Spurs Stadium. What I did there as well, I just added a very um, basic uh, physical sky just to give it some sense of shadowing and how it looked. It might look when it's rendered. Okay, so we get to that point here. Uh, again, I'm going to just show you very quickly the, the, the um, go up into full screen mode, go into plan view, show the um, plan here. Camera's top. And it shows you. Yeah, it's basically showing you how um, how it looks from the plan view. Please note, I, I used um, symmetry, so I'm not modeling the whole thing at the same time, I'm modeling half these things. So if you see that that's the symmetry looking on the, uh, what's something called North Rim Support here, which is the rim. That is modeled in half. So the symmetry flips it automatically. So any changes I make on one side happens on the other side. So if you go display that in a camera perspective, and you can start seeing. Actually, yes, and also when I model it, I make sure I model the, um, the side of that rim from a side profile. So you're getting the, the, the profile is very important in terms of like for the shape. So we're not just modeling it um, by eye, you're using the side profile from the plan, from the blueprints to model this shape. So you're modeling it correctly from back because the shape actually changes from the front to back. It flattens out as it reaches the back and it's more curved at the front. So this shape is very important that we get this correct. And you can see how the rim support is starting to be modeled here. And the model of it as as this again, this is done from the side blueprints. I was able to get the detail of the cabling and the structure. Okay, this is as far as I got with number two. Uh, so I'm just close that down. Don't want to say changes to that. Now I'm going to quickly go into number three which is making even more progress or showing you more progress so I started to get the shapes in and getting the outside structure 
uh, this is showing you how um, the inner rim was was starting to be modeled and making there was an adjustment to the su supports you know um, Ahmed um, after further observation I realized that these were not um, done by uh, iron um, st steel um, framework it was uh, they were more like steel wires wires that were supporting this so that was adjusted to make them look more like steel wires so that's adjusted again just adding more stuff to the outside of it again making sure that we um, are not losing sight of accuracy again Okay, so we start to get things like uh, um, yeah, the, the different sections within the stands. So I'm going to try, I was trying to make sure that the outside rims um, support for the rim supports for, for the stands were, were drawn in correctly. So let's show, basically show you that, uh, that bit progressed. Now I'm going to close that down. So we're going to number four, which is the next bit I reached to. And then we started finding like, like V shapes now. The shapes of the actual outside of the building was made more accurate again so you start, you start seeing more form added more rim supports added on the south side then we started adding like the supports on the on the rear south south supports on the rear which was used by you know, a spline was used to create guides to make sure that it was accurate and we started like um we completed the rim section the glass rim section well, i can't um, unless i would so just render that out and you can start seeing again I'm trying to get accuracy here the main thing is the accuracy it's time adding details on the outside this was I mean for instance like these bits were constructed from side blueprints side side views so we we know that you know, this will be 100 percent accurate and also we're using I'm using YouTube videos drone footage to make sure that everything is in order in terms of accuracy as well again still adhering to blueprints so here I added a further blueprint okay, which one which one plane eight which one is that that should show something else Plane A, yeah, plane A started to show some other bits around the building, around the structure, and so which is able to give me um, the layout of the Spurs Stadium within its within the area. Again, you can see how we try to maintain accuracy. That's blueprint added there. So you can see how that works. 
I'll turn that blueprint off. There we go, full screen that, and you can start seeing we nearly have all the rim supports in. You just highlight that, you can see all the rim supports are starting to be there. Just a few more need, that need to be added. So I'm going to go back to full screen mode. Again, you can start seeing, like, uh, if we show this here, yeah, all four screens, you can start seeing how blueprints are laid out. So you go display, you can see. Brush shading. Display brush shading. Brush shading. So you can still see that um, you're trying to maintain accuracy. Okay, that was that bit there. So I'm going to close this down. That's number four. Hopefully I should be able to find number five. I'm not sure if that is actually on here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Let's play stadium. Here's number five. Here was not yeah, number five was here. It's probably gonna take a little bit longer to open because it's a bit more complex. A lot more detail was added at this stage. So I've started to add a few more bits. Here I replaced the pitch with a proper pitch, which I drew in Photoshop. So it was drawn in Illustrator. The computer's slowing down rapidly now because there's a lot more data points to 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 look at. So I start to add a lot more seats in. Rim supports are done. All the way around. Taking quite a way uh, a time to navigate because this is trying to render all the seats. In fact, I, what I should do is um, hide these seats temporarily just to make it more easy to, nav to navigate. This is which exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hide these seats. So that's the east stand. So you can see, I could just show you how it's done. The one seat was done as a master, and I cloned it along um, the side. So, so to make up the seat, number seat volume. So each seat is actually um, present. It's going to be 62,000 seats. I'm not sure if they're going to be exactly 62,000 seats, but it's going to be pretty close to it because I've more than the correct number of seats and aisles in, within this model. So there's going to be a lot of seats, so it's going to be very hungry. Mind you, the model is still only 20 megs at this point, so it's not that big a file. The, the problem is that if we go into, say if we get uh, information, then you can see that really, if we expanded this model, it will be looking at four, three million, four million poly, poly, polygons. At the moment, it's standing at um, 149,000 polygons because it's using instances at the moment. So it's not rendering everything, it's just using instances. So it's only 149,000 polygons and memory is only 21, 22 megabytes. But I can easily see this reaching up to 100 megabytes plus if we start removing the instances and making them actual actual polygons 
it's, um, that's memory saving in terms of like using instances instead of um, rendering out actual polygons. So let me just hide these seating bits for now, just to speed up the movement. So I hide these things. As I'll hide the south sense, south sense as well. I can see the seat master. Stand seats. I'll just hide that for now. Just hide those seats just to um, so that we can start seeing this a bit more. We can start moving around this model more quickly. You can see how I've modeled the um, a lot more detail on the outside being modeled now. So you start getting like the um, the grounds and the steps. This was model again. I don't know if you saw earlier in the video. I had the um, outside blueprints where I was able to like position exactly where all these stands and entrances are. You know, so we start going into accuracy, and we start going to level of detail here, showing you. I actually went to the stadium and took photographs of these steps and stairs to show you like showing you how what the handrails look like so these there are the correct number of handrails as well on each steps so if we just do like, a quick render this is um, showing you all these uh, rails are correct in terms of like the number of steps and number of handrails And he's talking about if we go into the front, um, the front of the stadium now. That's what that model the uh, entrance. This is the west stand entrance, so that's modeled. What I did is um, to the south, uh, the west, and the east sides are. This was done as a symmetry, but I removed the symmetry because the east side is different to the west side in terms of like what's happening on the, on the other side. So yeah, there are some differences. And I started to model um, The glass at the back, not quite complete, but it is more or less complete there. Yeah? I don't know if that's showing. A quick thing to make the glass correct is that glass has always has to fit, have a thickness to uh, to make the uh, the index correct. So what I did is just put a cloth modifier on that glass. So that's the top half of the glass done, but the bottom half is not done at this point. And again, as I said, the other side of the stadium, if you note, is different to the west side. So the east side is different to the west side of the stadium in terms of like the entrances. It doesn't have the um, same, even though the shape is similar, you don't have the pronounced exit at the back as it as it as it does on the front, so there there isn't that, and there's some different um, um steps configuration. So that again, this is trying to get 
as accurate as possible in terms of like what this stadium is doing. And then, and then I start to model the cockerel, which is modeled from the actual from photographs. Actually modeled this on a second separate document and then just pasted it here. So you can see the cockerel is modeled correctly as it should look. Again, the name of the game here is accuracy. The pitch is much more accurately modeled. It's not, not out of proportion as it was before which was a placeholder pitch and then also modeled the, the actual goals with the mesh still a mesh modifier the actual mesh net modifier is to be added to make it look more like a, a net so if we go into it see that the uh, goal is modeled Again, that's this bit now. Now I'm going to go into the where I'm at today. Pretty much up to date now. So I'm going to go into the last bit now. I'll close this down, number five. I don't want to say changes to that because I made no changes to that. I'm going to go into where I'm at today now, which is number six. You can see that number six is the file size is 25 megabytes for a graphic this or for a for a model this big this is containing millions of polygons but again because there are instances they're not taking up the space that it would take it's not you're not taking up as much memory Now, if you can see, you see, I've reached this point now where I've started to add some textures. It's a um, UV mapping, so a bit of UV mapping is going on here as well. So um, I was able to um, map uh, the textures onto the building. So, so I, was, I was able to flatten out uh, the building structure uh, to make a UV map. And I, I drew this. Um, in Illustrator, the texture done in Illustrator and then imported to Photoshop, then mapped onto to the side of the building. So this is what we started to do, started to color the seats, uh, texture the seats. Start to map, I could just quickly show you in Illustrator how I did it. So in Illustrator, I, sh I will show you Illustrator. Here's, here's another graphic we did uh, was done in, in Adobe Illustrator. So this is not a 3D model, this is a drawing Illustrator. So this is an Illustrator model. So this is this is not a 3D model but um, a graphic which was drawn by my well, it was drawn by um with a team. Anyway, so I'll close that down. Don't save that. I'll show you um, how we did that texture. I 
how to build in main texture. Okay. And that will show you how I use that as an example. Got it there. It shows you the texture from the side. I, I screen grabbed that from um, YouTube and that was, gave me the guide for colors. So I created that in Illustrator. Uh, let me just hide that layer. So if you show layers here, just hide this layer here, that layer, and it shows you uh, my UV map flattened out. So I flattened it out. Put that in Illustrator, drew that, drew that in Illustrator. Then go, went into Photoshop, go into Photoshop. Here's some renders I, I've done of it. Very quick renders. Now go to Photoshop and then we go into Texture. And you see building out to main. And that's the texture in Photoshop. And then I was able to bring this texture into uh, Cine 4D and apply it to the building because it's UV mapped and it should it should fit exactly how I wanted it to uh, fit around that building. If you noticed on on the um, Illustrator file, go to Illustrator file and look at that. Some of these uh, these um, side panels are raised. Yes, I, I've actually incorporated that into my model as well. So I'm going to raise the side of these um, um, side panels where where they're supposed to be raised. And also, the cockerel needs to be drawn in on the side, which is yet to be done. So that's to be done. I'll just show you some other things I did just to make sure uh, we're going on the right path. So when I did some renders, I did also make sure that that the accuracy is, is correct. So if I did a, um, a render uh, showing a comparison of the stadium with a, an actual photograph, so I'm sure. this is the comparison. So we must make sure that we're keeping ourselves accurate. Accurate. So yeah, again, we show you the. Um, let me show you that in full screen, so you could you, you, we're not getting distracted. You uh, window uh, window view. Ah, oh, I'm in, I'm in Illustrator at the moment, so it's it's it's, it's wrong software in the unit. And that's really why I found. But I'm going to show you. No name. Compare. I just want to show you the comparison. Website view, and then you just view that in full screen. Then that bigger. Let's just make sure to show you that. Yes, we're 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 on the right track in terms of like accuracy. That word again. So I try to carry back it as best as I can. And showing that proportions are what they're supposed to be. Scan that. Close that down. And you're going back to single 4D. And you go back to the latest version of it as it stands today. I've got more work to do, still a lot more work to be done because there's about 30,000 more seats to be placed. It's 
uh, we're going to um, screen full screen mode. And yeah, let's do a quick render. What's going to happen now is that I'm going to add the rest of the seats. I'm going to model the um, dugout seats, which is slightly, which is well, majorly different to um, to the uh, regular seats. I'm going to um, improve the lighting. Perhaps added some lighting to the floodlights to give some ambiance. And then the textures are going to, going to be improved in terms of light on the outside. Textures improvement, like the um, concrete textures and and metal metal textures, roof textures, etc. Everything's going to be improved. I'm going to UV map the outer rim so that that is more in keeping to how it's supposed to look. So we're we're nearly there. Let me show you how I render might look from inside. Very moment at the moment, it's it could slow my computer right now. I'm using a MacBook Pro 15 inch MacBook Pro. So a lot more work to be done, a lot more work. It shows you at this point I've got all the floodlights floodlights in now uh, in the right in, in correctly placed. Some of them some of these textures are not correct at the moment, but um, they will be. I estimate another two weeks work weeks work on this to finish all off stopping looking into it So we start down here. Let's hit a little quick window of this. Again, still more seats needs to be added. The biggest problem I, I had doing these seats is when the seats go around the corner because you can't just put it on a, a spline. And um, clone it along the spline. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. It doesn't work accurately enough. So they have to be placed almost individ uh, individually, linear linearly along the uh, along the um, rows by hand, you know, row by row, which is time consuming. So if you want accuracy, if someone knows a quicker way of doing it, um, I appreciate their feedback. So um, let me know. If you know a quick way of placing these seats along the curve accurately. A view from inside the stadium. And again, we're nearly there. Just a bit more to go to push through. Thank you very much.